hello students today we will learn that why ntu method is used for an heat exchanger in which cases we have to use ntu method okay so over here i am giving you a brief of lmtt method of heat exchanger i have already posted a lecture in regards of the context of lmtd for heat exchanger so over here i am just giving a brief suppose this is a parallel flow heat exchanger hot fluid is entering through this central pipe it is double pipe heat exchanger and cold fluid is entering and flowing through this outer peripheral pipe and coming out it is entering with temperature thi hot fluid is entering with temperature thi and coming out with temperature tho cold fluid is entering with temperature tci and coming out with temperature tco now what is lmtd lmtd equals to theta 2 minus theta 1 upon log theta 2 by theta 1 here what is theta 2 theta 2 is the exit temperature difference of the two fluids that is equals to tho minus tco okay and theta 1 is what thi minus tci inlet temperature difference of the hot and cold fluid okay so putting these values in this expression we will get lmtd now heat transfer rate for this heat exchanger would be equals to q equals to ua lmtd u is the overall heat transfer coefficient of this corresponding heat exchanger a is the area of exposure through which heat is transferring L lmtd i have already told now in case only input conditions are given for a heat exchanger means we know the inlet temperature of hot fluid and cold fluid okay we know the mass flow rate of hot fluid mh and we know the cold fluids mass flow rate that is equal to mc similarly we know the specific heat of hot fluid ch and specific heat of cold fluid that is equal to cc these are the inlet conditions okay exit con conditions we don't know means we don't know the exit temperature of the hot and cold fluid in that case it is difficult to find out the heat transfer rate of heat exchanger because we cannot find out lmtd until unless we know the exit temperatures of the fluid so in case we are only provided with the inlet conditions and not provided with the exit conditions especially the temperatures of the hot and cold fluid at the exit in that case if we want to find out the heat transfer rate then we have to adopt the ntu method the ntu method was discovered in the past developed in the past by the two scientists named london and case okay and by the help of ntu method we can find out the heat transfer rate of an heat exchanger without knowing the exit temperatures of the two fluids only inlet conditions are given by the help of ntu method we can find out okay now for working with ntu method these conditions must be at least known first condition is maximum possible heat transfer rate when the two fluids are flowing then what is the maximum possible heat transfer rate between the two fluids okay just learn it as it is as i am speaking that we have to know the maximum possible heat transfer rate of the two fluids and in the next slide i am going to tell about that thing what is what could be the maximum possible heat transfer rate okay second thing we must have the specific heat of hot and cold fluid that is ch and cc respectively similarly we must have the mass flow rate of hot and cold fluids those can be written as mh and mc mass flow rates of hot and cold fluid and also we must have the information of what is the inlet temperature of cold fluid and hot fluid so we see over here that these four factors needs only the inlet conditions exit conditions are not required so n2 method can be used in case we only know the inlet conditions now we will talk about the maximum possible heat transfer rate between the two fluids suppose this is the heat exchanger this is the indicative diagram of the heat exchanger a uh, hot fluid is entering with temperature thi entering temperature and ultimately coming out with the temperature tho this is the exit temperature Similarly, cold fluid is entering from opposite side with temperature TCI and ultimately coming out from the either end with temperature TCO. Whatever heat which is dispensed by this hot fluid is absorbed by the cold fluid. Now, in case I ask that in ideal condition, what could be the minimum temperature of this hot fluid? This hot fluid is entering with temperature THI. What could be the minimum possible temperature at the exit? It could be TCI which is the inlet temperature of cold fluid because heat always transfers from high temperature to low temperature so hot fluids temperature at the exit cannot fall below the inlet temperature of cold fluid so maximum to maximum the hot fluid can exit with 
inlet temperature of cold fluid similarly this cold fluid is obtaining heat from this hot fluid heat ejection so at most under ideal condition with maximum heat transfer rate at the exit what could be the tco means exit temperature of cold fluid at the exit the maximum temperature could be thi itself okay because it is gaining heat from this hot fluid so since the highest temperature of this hot fluid is thi so the cold fluid temperature at the exit cannot be more than this thi the reason is same that heat always transfers from high temperature to low temperature okay now the amount of heat which is rejected by hot fluid say it is qh equals to mhch here mh is the mass flow rate ch is the specific heat of the hot fluid into thi minus tho this is what the amount of heat which is rejected by the hot fluid now this mhch can be written collectively as capital ch called as heat capacity the combined form of this mhch can be written as capital ch so qh equals to heat capacity of hot fluid into thi minus tho this much amount of heat which is rejected by this hot fluid similarly the amount of heat which is absorbed by the cold fluid is equals to mccc tco minus tci this mccc can be collectively written as cc heat capacity of cold fluid okay what happens whatever heat which is rejected by hot fluid is what absorbed by the cold fluid in a heat exchanger okay so we can write ch thi minus tho equals to cc tco minus tci okay now in case we are taking that condition that hot fluid ultimately comes out with the entering temperature of cold fluid and the cold fluid ultimately comes out with the entering temperature of hot fluid in that case the amount of heat which is supplied by hot fluid would be ch thi minus tci reason hot fluids exit temperature we are assuming the maximum heat transfer rate so hot fluids exit temperature is equals to the cold fluids inlet temperature so amount of heat which is rejected by hot fluid equals to ch thi minus tci similarly the amount of heat absorbed by the cold fluid since cold fluid is heating up and ultimately at the exit it is coming out with the inlet temperature of hot fluid so there also we have to write cc the exit temperature of cold fluid minus the inlet temperature of cold fluid okay so we are getting two expressions okay out of these two equations one has the maximum possible heat transfer rate means both the equations will give if we are putting the magnitudes the values of these variables in that case with two equations we will get two values so which is the maximum possible heat transfer rate it could be understood by this analogy suppose we have two bottles one is of 2 gallon other is of 1 gallon in case i ask that what could be the maximum possible fluid transfer complete fluid transfer between the two bottles it is the answer is 1 gallon reason is suppose i say this bottle is fully filled with 2 gallon and this is empty so in case we are transferring fluid to this big bottle to small bottle then only 1 gallon will be occupied by this bottle and 1 gallon will remain over here so it is not complete fluid transfer but in case 1 gallon is completely filled with fluid and this is empty then 1 gallon can be poured in this 2 gallon bottle completely okay so the maximum possible complete fluid transfer between these two bottles would be 1 gallon same context will be over here okay out of these two which is the minimum will be the maximum amount of heat transfer rate between the two fluids which are running in the heat exchanger this can be understood by a practical example suppose i say that inlet temperature of hot fluid is 100 units and inlet temperature of cold fluid is 10 units and the heat capacity of hot fluid capital ch is 5 and heat capacity of cold fluid is 2 so amount of heat rejected by hot fluid will be 5 into 100 minus 10 that is equals to 450 units so this is what the heat rejected by the hot fluid and the heat absorbed by the cold fluid equals to cc heat capacity of cold fluid into thi minus tci again so putting the values 2 into 100 minus 10 that is equals to 180 units now how it can be possible the amount of heat rejected by the hot fluid is 450 units in case of maximum heat transfer rate but amount of heat absorbed by the cold fluid is 180 units in case of maximum heat transfer rate so out of these two 180 unit is possible because 450 units it is dispensing but it is only absorbing 180 so 180 units is the maximum heat transfer rate in this case similarly the values are changed suppose the inlet temperature of hot fluid is 100 
एंड इनलेट टेम्परेचर ऑफ कोल्ड फ्लूड इज टेन ओके एंड हीट कैपेसिटी ऑफ कोल्ड फ्लूड इज फाइव एंड हॉट फ्लूड इज टू यू कैन सी ओवर हेयर द हीट कैपेसिटी ऑफ हॉट फ्लूड इज स्मॉलर देन कोल्ड फ्लूड कॉन्ट्ररी टू दैट ऑफ हीट कैपेसिटी ऑफ हॉट फ्लूड एंड कोल्ड फ्लूड इन फर्स्ट एग्जाम्पल ओके सो नाउ द हीट डिस्पेंस्ड बाई द हॉट फ्लूड इक्वल टू हाउ मच टू इन टू हंड्रेड माइनस टेन वन एटी यूनिट्स एंड हीट एब्जॉर्ड बाई द कोल्ड फ्लूड इक्वल टू हाउ मच फोर फिफ्टी यूनिट्स ओके नाउ हाउ इट कैन बी पॉसिबल दैट वन एटी यूनिट्स आर डिस्पेंसड by the hot fluid and it is absorbing for few units not possible so maximum possible heat transfer rate will be the this is smaller one that is 180 units so in general we can say that maximum amount of heat transfer rate when two fluids are flowing in an heat exchanger is equals to q max equals to c min min means out of the two means out, uh, this ch or cc out of the two which is minimum you can see over here cc is smaller okay so that we have to use maximum possible heat transfer rate over here also ch is smaller so we have to put over here so in place of c min we have to keep that heat capacity which is smaller than out of the two so q max equals to c min into thi minus tci this is the general formula for maximum heat transfer rate for an heat exchanger now we have to learn few more things to understand the antu method okay first thing is the effectiveness of heat exchanger it is denoted by epsilon it is equals to the actual heat transfer rate in the heat exchanger upon the maximum possible heat transfer rate in the heat exchanger we have already learned that maximum possible heat transfer rate in the heat exchanger equals to c min out of the two heat capacities hot and cold fluid whichever is lesser that is the c min capital c min into thi minus tci this is what the maximum possible heat transfer rate now actually suppose hot fluid is entering with thi and outcome is tho so in actual case the amount of heat which is dispensed from hot fluid equals to capital c h heat capacity of hot fluid into t h i minus t h o similarly this is also equal to the amount of since the amount of heat dispensed by hot fluid is what absorbed by cold fluid exactly same amount is absorbed so the effectiveness can also be written as the maximum possible heat transfer rate in the denominator and the amount of heat absorbed by the cold fluid that is equals to heat capacity of the cold fluid capital c c into t c o minus t c a so this is what called as effectiveness of heat exchanger similarly next term we have to learn is heat capacity ratio that is equals to c min by c max means mhch and mccc are the heat capacities of the two fluids okay so out of those two whichever is lesser is in the numerator it could be mhch or mccc and whichever is greater is in the denominator so c min by c max is called as heat capacity ratio denoted by capital c without any subscript or superscript similarly ntu next term we have to learn is ntu number of transfer units has its expression that is equals to ua by c min here u is the overall heat transfer coefficient of the heat exchanger a is the area of exposure through which heat is transferring and c min is the out of the two heat capacities of hot fluid and cold fluid respectively whichever is the smaller one will in the denominator so we have learned three things those are effectiveness of heat exchanger that is equals to actual heat transfer rate in the heat exchanger upon the maximum possible heat transfer rate in the heat exchanger here we have learned the heat capacity ratio that is equals to c min by c max and ntu that is equals to ua by c min u is the overall heat transfer coefficient a is the area of exposure through which heat is transferring and c min is the uh, out of the two heat capacity whichever is whichever is lesser is in the denominator now we'll understand that why he ha we have learned all these things it is very clear see it is found by derivations that effectiveness of any heat exchanger is always a function of ntu and c for example the effectiveness of parallel flow heat exchanger is equals to 1 minus e to the power e over here is that e exponent e to the power minus ntu into 1 plus c upon 1 plus c okay so effectiveness is function of only ntu and c similarly for the case of counter flow heat exchanger effectiveness equals to 1 minus e to the power minus ntu bracket 1 minus c upon 1 minus c e to the power minus ntu into one on a scene bracket similarly this is the expression for shell and tube heat exchanger so what we see that effectiveness is always a function of ntu and c these are all derived expressions these are not empirical expressions these are derived expression after derivation i am not showing the exact derivation over here but this is what the context of this thing that effectiveness is always a function of ntu and c now what is the benefit of benefit of this thing it is very simple to understand see effectiveness equals to the actual heat transfer rate upon maximum possible heat transfer rate so maximum possible heat transfer rate equals to c min into thi minus tci so 
सो दिस दिस एक्सप्रेशन क्यू मैक्स ओनली डिपेंड्स अपॉन द इलेट कंडीशन ऑफ फ्लू एंड ओवर द न्यू रेटर वॉट इज देयर द हीट रिजेक्टेड बाय द हॉट फ्लू दैट इज इक्वल टू सी एच द हीट कैपेसिटी ऑफ हॉट फ्लू दिस इज ऑल्सो इलेट कंडीशन एम एस सी एच ओके इन टू टी एच आई माइनस टी एच ओ दिस वी डोट नॉट नो ओके बिकॉज दिस इज नॉट इनलेट कंडीशन बट द आर एच एस इज कंप्लीटली डिपेंडिंग ऑन इनलेट कंडीशन बिकॉज एन टी एन सी डिपेंड्स ऑन इनलेट कंडीशन एंड इन द एल एच एस ओनली अन नोन वेरियबल इज वॉट टी एच ओ ओके सो इन केस वी आर एबल टू फाइंड द आर एच एस बाई पुटिंग ऑल द मैग्नीट्यूड दैन जस्ट बाई इक्वेटिंग इट विद द इफेक्टिवनेस by the help of this formula we can find out the exit temperature similarly the effectiveness is also given by cc into tco minus tca over here also c min depends on inlet conditions thi tci are inlet temperatures of the hot and cold fluid and this tci is also inlet temperature of cold fluid this tco we don't know but rhs we know okay so just by equating the expression of uh, effectiveness with this rhs then we can find out this exit temperature of cold fluid okay so once we have got the exit temperature of hot and cold fluid we can easily apply the lmtd method to find out the net heat transfer rate through that heat exchanger so this is what the benefit the merit of nt method that in case we know only inlet conditions of the fluids flowing through the heat exchanger then by the help of those corresponding inlet conditions we can find out the exit temperatures and then we can find out the heat transfer it by lmtd method thank you